Okay, welcome to topic seven, scalars and vectors. Now I'm gonna go through this very quick. So it's gonna be a short video, maybe maximum 10 minutes. There's not an awful lot in it. Um, so the first thing first is your scale and your vector. So a scale, guys, is magnitude, so things like length, area, time. And your vector has to have a direction as well as a magnitude. So displacement, acceleration, force. Um, so 200 meters per second is a scale. 200 meters per second north is a vector, okay? Uh, so what we're going to deal with here, guys, I'm going through this because it's very short. You don't really need to know that. That's kind of junior science, basic math stuff. Uh, it's here um, with two vectors. You just got to remember that generally, leave us our physics, we kind of just deal with um, perpendicular vectors. Uh, so we don't go any more extreme than that. So for us, it's basically the idea is you'd always have... Now, in real life, you have the x, y, and the z axis impacting on things. But for us, we're going to just say 2D. So you're going to have two things impacting it. You're going to have the vertical and you're going to have the horizontal, okay? So whenever you throw something, there is going to be movement on the y-axis and the x-axis, okay? And as a result, you get your, your resultant, which is the direction in which the object goes, okay? And what you'll find is that this is equal to this down here and this equals this over here. So what you have is you have two right angle triangles with which to find out the resultant <laughs> or the horizontal or vertical components, okay? So here, this is now I'm gonna explain where this equation on the bottom comes from. Now you don't really need to know where it comes from. You can get away with just learning off that equation. It's in the log tables and slapping in your values and away you go. But the reason I always try and stress that you should learn where it comes from is that it makes it a lot easier to understand. And also they can't really catch you out with any trick questions because sometimes they'll ask this in a subtle, with a slight subtle change. Whereas if you understand where these kind of equations come from, it makes it a lot easier to answer the questions and understand what's going on. So what I do is up here with this triangle we have here, I shade in this region, okay? And, sorry, I hit the wrong button there. And what I say is, right, so it's a right angle triangle, okay? And we have this, all right? And we, what we wanna find is find x or our horizontal. Find x, find the horizontal, okay? So what we can do there is we'll simply say, oh, so find x if we have, sorry, we have v and theta. So we have the resultant and we have theta, find x. All right, so what we will do is we will go for cos, cos theta. Why? We have this, we have this, and we need to find this, okay? Because what is cos? Cos is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So cos is the adjacent, which is the x-axis over the hypotenuse, which is the v. So x equals v cos theta. That's where the equation comes from. Nice and simple. Okay? Nice and simple. And now we do the same for the vertical. Let's say you have the resultant and you have the, the angle. Well, that's going to be sine. And the same thing again. What is sine? Sine is the opposite of the hypotenuse. So sine is the opposite, which is here which we said is the same as the y-axis, y over uh, the hypotenuse, which is v. So y equals sine, I made a mistake there, y equals v sine theta. And there you go. That's where they come from. So I know what you're thinking. Why the hell did I need to know that when the equation is given to you? Simple is sometimes they won't give you theta. What they will do is they will give you this angle. Okay, so they can give you that angle. So instead of giving you theta, they'll give you alpha. All right, they'll say that the angle, often they'll say the angle, they, well, they won't say theta or, or alpha. What they'll say is they'll say 70 degrees to the horizontal or 30 degrees from the vertical. You see? All right, so it could be 70 degrees from the horizontal. Well, not 30 because that gets you 120 degrees, sorry. So it, you've 70 degrees from the horizontal, okay? Or 20 degrees from the vertical because obviously 70 plus 30 is 100 and the maximum angle we do with is 90 so it should be 70 and 20 there apologies for that all right so they mean the same thing the same angle but they're from different sides one is from the vertical one is from the horizontal okay now i have a question below that i'll do and that kind of show you what i mean so the first question here is a force of 200 newtons is inclined so 
force 200 newtons is inclined at 70 degrees from the horizontal. Okay, so now what we want to find is the horizontal and vertical, but as a word missing there, it should be resolved into the horizontal and vertical components. Okay, so that's simple enough. H is x, x equals uh, v cos theta, which is 200 cos 70. So that should work out as 68.4. Newtons, don't forget your SI units. Our vertical component is Y, which equals V sine theta, which is 200 sine 70, which should be 187.94 Newtons. There you go, very straightforward, fairly easy. Okay, so it's a very straightforward one. So this one then is a little bit more tricky. So, Find the horizontal and vertical components of a vector of magnitude 200. That should be um, Newtons as well. Um, that should have been an N. It's not going to bother writing anymore. Uh, so 240 degrees from the vertical. Now. The reason this one catches people out is they don't read it. 40 degrees to the vertical, they do what they did above here, and they follow the same x equals v cos theta, y equals v sine theta, and away they go, and you're wrong, okay? We're no longer off the horizontal, we're off the vertical, okay? So there's two ways you can do this, okay? I'm gonna show you the long way, and then I'm gonna show you the short way, okay? So y x now what we do is we want to find theta so what's theta going to be here well theta equals 90 minus 40 okay which gives us 50 so now we have theta we can solve horizontal equals v cos ah my god i keep seeing I keep hitting my hand off the screen. That's why it's jumping all over the place. You keep trying to write without touching the screen at all. It's very awkward. X equals V cos theta, which equals 200 cos 50, which gives us 128.6 newtons. And then vertical equals Y equals V sine theta. Again, 200 sine 50 equals... 153.2 newtons. That does not look like 153. 153. And there you go. There are your two uh, answers 128.6, 153.2. Okay. That's the long way because we had to find theta first. There is a shorter way. Okay, so that's one way to do it. That's probably, if, for you, if it's easy for you to comprehend, that's fine, do it that way. The other way is simply this. Okay, so I'm gonna just rub this out. Now, if you look at your, your triangle above, okay? Right. This equals this. So our right angle triangle is this. You see, that's why that's x, that's 200, and that's 40. If I gave you that triangle, this triangle here, if I gave you this, and I asked you to find x and find y, how would you do it? Sine, cos, and tan, again, okay? Because what we would say, is for x, we would say, well, sine theta is equal to, it's going to be equal to um, opposite, which is x, over our hypotenuse, which is 200. You see? So x equals 200 sine 40, which gives us 1, 2, 8.6 newtons, which is the exact same as we got earlier y would be 
200 then cos 40, which gives 153.2 newtons, the exact same as we got earlier. So instead of having to go off and subtract two angles and get a new angle and slot them in, you can skip all that, look at it this way, you have a right angle triangle here, okay? So you can still find your x and y just from that, okay? That's why I say it's important to know where that equ these equations come from, okay? All right? It's just basically right angle triangles. That's all you're doing, okay? It's just a right angle triangle. You have your, you're looking for x and y. You have the angle. You have the hypotenuse, and away you go, okay? Now, the last thing I want to look at here is the result in this kind of thing. It isn't the section A, it's the section B. Question can get asked. So you'll be asked to find the resultant of two forces, okay? So if we have three Newton meters, these are all Newton meters. And you have forces pulling back, so F1, F2, and that's F3, okay? And if the ring in the middle is balanced, Okay, read the forces. The resultant of any two forces can now be shown to be equal to the magnitude and opposite direction of the third. In other words, there is a force here that is also F3 that is equal to this, all right? Because it's the resultant of these two. There is a force here, F2, which is equal to F2 here, which is the resultant of these two. And there is a force here, F1, which is equal to this F1, and it's the resultant of these two forces here. And that's kind of what it is, that's what it means, okay? It's very straightforward, simple to draw. Three Newtons on a knot, uh, make sure that the knot is at rest. Uh, once it is, read the, the force on all three Newtons, and then you can calculate out that there is the resultant force opposite each, and there you go. That's it, that is vectors and scalars, very straightforward, okay? The next one I'm gonna do there, guys, is topic eight, but that's topic seven.